Hey, it's Aaron the Metal Theologian. And, um, yeah, we're gonna do that fucking 20 questions thing. I didn't do it last year because I thought it was dumb. I bet here's the thing I did do it the year before, and I thought it was dumb then too, but it was still kind of fun. So, I don't know. I guess I was just kind of being a dick last year. More realistic, I was probably being lazy. But anyway, we'll just fucking do it. I pulled a few things out. I think some of the questions are dumb, so I'm gonna skip them. But, um,. Yeah, so I was going to just play fucking noise records because of uh, the copyright thing. On my last video, I played uh, False Speech by Aaron Dillaway and uh, Spencer Ye. And I got a fucking ad put on the thing anyway. Like, I got a fucking thing saying it's from Orchard Music Group on behalf of Hanson. So I was kind of bummed, but like, I'm a big enough Hanson booster that if, they're, if he's actually making a few bucks off it... You know, I mean, a few pennies off my fucking video. But, like, you know, if Orchard's doing right by Dillaway, I, I can live with that. So I actually reached out to him, but he's, like, he was giving a talk somewhere or something, so he couldn't really talk. But he's pretty easy to get a hold of. Anyway, I give up. I just fucking give up, man. It's fucking hopeless. So hopefully this fucking video won't be monetized by some other asshole. But, um, I mean, because I rarely do that myself anyway, but... We'll see. So anyway, what we're listening to right now is this is one of the ones that I got when I was up in uh went up there for North uh when I was up in North Carolina for a uh, Grown Man Record Night. Uh, Bananas turned me on to this one, Mr. Mikey Bananas himself. And this is I, I think I've talked about this twice now, but it's like a local thing. I didn't want to play it because I was being a dick about it. So, uh. but anyway, this goes to one of the questions too because one of the questions was um was something that someone in the VC turned you on to in the past year. And this right here counts, although it wasn't in 2018, it wasn't 2019, so, uh, anyway. Um, yeah, uh, Spencer's back for the occasion, and I also brought back the soda, because I got this malt star shit, and I kind of want one of these anyway. So I figured, what the fuck, I don't know what this is. Um, but it has the calorie, oh, fuck, man. Wait, how many servings are in this fucking thing? Oh, it's one serving. Wow, that's funny. Okay. Yeah, I thought it has kilojoules. It says energy in kilojoules. And it's 468 per mm -hmm. serving. I thought that was calories, but it says 112 per serving. That's kind of hard to believe. So, yeah, I don't know what the fuck this is. I'm assuming this is going to be like uh, one of those Malta drinks. It has barley malt, which contains gluten. Has carbon dioxide. Okay, actually, seriously, the ingredients are water, barley malt, sugar, carbon dioxide, and hops. So we'll think this is good. This is from the finest barley, which is good because I don't like shit that's made with mediocre barley. I only like the finest barley. So we're going to fucking bust this out. Here, show the uh, thing. Are you showing it? Mm -hmm. This is the thing that Spencer gave me. Not all that long ago. Oh, it's probably been about a year, huh? That's my it's fucking more mounted than a year. bottle opener. Really? Oh, yeah. God damn. Yeah, alright, let's see how this is, though. Did you get that label? I haven't seen that before. Yeah. Let me try this. Is, is kind of bad, but... Yeah, this isn't really a soda. It's kind of more like a... It's brewed. It's probably closer to a beer, but it's not alcoholic. It's not like the... Uh, I thought it was going to be like a Malta Goya or something. It's actually more refreshing. It's not as like heavy, but it still has that intense flavor. Probably has a little bit more of a molasses thing going on. I'm trying to do the conversion in my head for this. Oh, it has, oh, it has calories too. What? 112 calories. Yeah, it's but about 100. right. For that thing, yeah, I'd expect that to be more like fucking four, 300 calories, not 400. That's a lot. You have a sip that's what I think, but if it's 400, that's right. It's per 100 milliliters. Okay, this is three. Yeah, it's th it's serving per 100 milliliters. It just says it badly. Or hold on, never mind. Yeah, yeah, I, it's see, per total serving. I did the same thing. I just did it quietly. Yeah. Not that you should have been quiet about that. That's that fine. is weird. Isn't it funny? It's in jewels, though. You know something? That's yeah, standard. Sip. Yeah, it's standard, because that's what Coca-Cola has. It says kilojoules 
And then Spencer's in all this fucking science shit. That's why he thinks that's standard. So actually, this is a new shop that I got here in town that's like Israeli run or something. That's the only thing in the shop that I saw that wasn't didn't have Hebrew printing on it. Everything else was Hebrew. Some of it had English too, some of it was just Hebrew. It kind of tripped me out, especially because, you know, I'm not exactly in New York here, let alone Tel Aviv, you know? What do you think? Do you hate it? It's a lot more smooth than I expected it to be. It is pretty smooth, isn't it? It's, it's like... Like, that feels less malty than a Malta. I want to see if it's like a Malta. If a Malta is like a regular beer, then this is like a light beer. But since given that light beer, light beer is such bullshit, that makes this sound a lot worse than it actually is. It's really good, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah? You really think so? Yeah, I like it. Huh? Yeah, I like it. Really? I like Malta, too. No, you don't. I thought you hated Malta. No. Really? Yeah. There's another thing you know, that you can, think I hate. Yeah, people can go back and watch the old videos, you know? Okay. Everyone's gonna go back and watch and I go, Spencer's full of shit. He hates Malta. He's just fucking making shit up. That's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna get all these comments. People are like, God damn it. Spencer, what are you making up about the fucking Malta? I don't actually think I've had Malta on you at this channel. Or with you on this channel before. Really? No. Because you've only had it like once or twice. Maybe three times. I'm pretty sure I did Malta Goya at least twice. And I know I did Malta India at least once. Because I just like that shit, so I drink it sometimes. Well, whatever. Mm. Ugh, God damn, excuse me. Isn't this good? Mostly drums. Might be all drums. I thought there was a little something else in it, but it's just fucking really good. Anyway, why don't we start with the questions, because we're just kind of hanging out. Which is fine. What's the first one? All right. First one was dumb, I think. What was it? Best find of 2018. Oh, yeah, I don't know my fucking best. You know, that's, that's a great question if you buy, like, one record a month. You know, but if... I mean, I don't want to, like, brag about how much money I spend, but, like... Yeah, let's put it this way. I have no idea what the best record I bought in 2018 was, which is a good problem to have because, uh, not a problem, because, but it's a good thing to be able to say because that means I got enough good shit that like, it's not like, oh God damn, everything sucked except this one, save, which was a saving grace. Otherwise I just give up and start collecting comic books. All right, go ahead, what's the next question? Okay, some VC channels that deserve more viewers. Okay, so one of them is Grown Man Record Night. I've kind of hyped Grown Man Record Night a lot lately, okay? But but Grown Man Record Night kind of operates in a different like realm, okay? Because it's not like a 10, 15, even 20 minute video, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like watching a show, you know what I mean? So I like binging it, you know what I mean? Sometimes, I mean, I usually watch it live, but if I don't watch it live or fall asleep, sometimes I'll just save them up and then binge a whole bunch of them. Just like fucking, I just finished watching Punisher. You know what I mean? It's like what I do with Grown Men Record Night. So it's not quite, it's not really, has a different vibe, you know? The format's consistent though, and uh, it's just a fucking great show. But if I'm gonna go for like a more like normal VC channel that everyone should be subscribed to that you might not be, fucking Nasty Metal Productions, man. Fucking subscribe to that dude, because he's good, he knows his shit, and he's awesome. So, um, yeah. It's funny, because a lot of the other channels I normally hype have, like, surpassed me in viewership. So it's kind of, I mean, there's no point to have a vinyl Richie, because he has more subs than me anyway. Scott Waters always has. Harmless Rebel, I think I might have overtaken now. So I hope y'all are subscribed to him, too, because first of all, he's a hell of a guy. Second of all, he's probably one of the best reviewers on here. Um, just as far as, like, the ability to, like, communicate the essence of a record in a few sentences. Yeah, Steve's the best at that. Um, and it's a fun channel to watch. Um, yeah, alright, um, but, but those are some good ones. And subscribe to Nasty Metal, though, because that, because that's fucking... I probably said this before, but like, he was at it for like a long time before people like me figured out that he was doing it. And goddamn, dude, you know, people are like, oh yeah, well I'd be doing this. I mean, I don't know if people say this on here, but you know how people talk about like, oh, well I would do this or that, even if I were the last person on earth. Well, he was doing it with fucking no one watching his shit and just like hanging in there and making one video after another with like solid reviews and like informed shit that he was talking about. And, like, just doing it, you know? So, like, now you can go back and look at all this shit. It's, like, just this amazing, like, corpus of, uh, work. But, um... 
but but from the standpoint of like just pure sheer like tenacity and like doing it for the love of doing it, I don't think anyone can beat nasty metal. Because I'll tell you. Well, I won't tell you. What's the next question? Holes you're looking to fill in your collection. All right, so this is kind of a dumb question because I don't like to think in terms of holes, but a lot of people do, and I used to. I kind of quit because I feel like it's healthier to sort of go, what records do I actually want as opposed to what am I missing by an artist, especially because a lot of times an artist will make shitty records and I don't really need to keep all those around like I used to. But there actually is one that eats at me. One record. And that is, I mean, there's more than one that I would grab if I saw it, but there's one particular one. And that is Where Angels Speak of, or When Angels Speak of Love by Sun Ra. Because I think I have every 60s Sun Ra record, except for that one. And it's fucking rare. And if it's been reissued on record, I am not aware of it. I've never seen one. Don't, I've never heard of the existence of one. I know there's a CD, you can get it on their fucking band camp. The music isn't that hard to find, but I want it on record. And I don't even, I'll take a reissue and be happy with it. There used to be two that bothered me. Secrets of the Sun and When Angels Speak of Love. And Secrets of the Sun got a reissue maybe four or five years ago now. When Angels Speak of Love, still nothing, man. So I'm hoping someone does that shit because that bothers me. I like to get all the 70s ones eventually too, but you know, that's, that's where it gets really kind of crazy. The 60s ones... I think I have them all except that one. It's fucking nuts. And by the way, since people watch these videos who don't watch all the other ones, this is my Sun Ra section over here. You getting this shit? This right here. I have it all separated out, but that's all Sun Ra, okay? So I don't say it lightly when I say that I'm, you know, this is the one that I really care about above all others. So. All right, what's next? You know what's funny people crack wise about me sitting on the floor from time to time, but I sit on the floor a lot anyway. I just do. I sit on the floor when I'm eating. It's like I'm Japanese or something. A cheap album that's really good. None of them. You have to spend at least 30 bucks for a record to be good. Nah, I'm kidding. Um, and this is hard, though, because it used to be, like, easy, you know, because you could find all sorts of good shit. But I pulled a couple out that you could probably get for less than 10 bucks, and they're kind of obvious records. And it's funny, this is the first record I'm showing. And how long into the video are we? 12 minutes. Fucking ridiculous. All right. This is one of my favorite records of all time. Secret Treaties by Blue Oyster Cult. Start to finish, I think it's pretty much perfect. Um, it was a creeper for me. I didn't instantly love it. But uh, I, I might actually play it when we're done with this video. Because it's still, it is so good. I guess Harvester of Eyes I could kind of do without. That's not my favorite song ever. But other than that, every song on here is awesome. Dominance and Submission, Career of Evil, Flaming Telepaths. I might have said this before too, but it's the second last song on the record. And I think it is probably the best second last song on any record. Okay? It's not something we think about as much. It's like a good first song, good clo a good opener, a good closer. But for the second last song, Flaming Telepaths, I don't think couldn't be better. The way it leads into astronomy, just fucking great. And then here's another one, too, that also isn't expensive. I've had this one for so long, though, man. But this is uh, Look at Yourself by Uriah Heep. You ought to be able to find this one for less than 10 bucks. Um, I always feel like I'm cheating when I say that this is my favorite Uriah Heep because this is the one where they sound most like Deep Purple. And that's one of my favorite bands ever. But this is a fantastic fucking record. Absolutely great. And uh, it's not expensive. What's next? Favorite side project album. Oh, dude, I don't know. You know something? If I weren't into jazz, I might be able to talk about this. But like half the shit is side. Here. Here we go. All right. This might be my favorite Coltrane record. All right. This is, this is a side project because, like, he kind of first came to prominence in Miles Davis's band. It's kind of a dumb thing to say. But this is a great record. I don't know if I'd call it a side project, really. Yeah, whatever. Let's keep going. A song from an artist or band that is uncharacteristic in their catalog. Oh, okay. You know, it's funny because uh, Chris from uh, Dixieland Farms... Uh, he caught this ahead of time because it was in the background. 
But um, my pick for this one is Rated X by Miles Davis. So look, I was just talking about fucking Miles Davis. Look at it. But uh, but that's like all like organ and it's like heavy. It's this fucking hard rocker. Here, so I'll just put it on. What the hell? Excuse me. I'm sitting right here. I knew at the outset this is going to be a long video anyway. And Jay from Vinyl in the Van, to whom you also ought to be subscribed, um, he likes long videos. A lot of times people are kind of lazy about them. They go, oh, it's a long video. I want to watch one. I don't like videos that are longer than like 10 or 15 minutes because that's what's optimized for the SEO on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? We actually might need to record this in two parts because my battery's draining faster than I thought it would. Oh, really? So be it, though. Can you plug it in? Um, actually, hold on. Hey, Coltrane. Coltrane, do you know where the phone charger is in my room? No. Okay, do you know where the plug is next to my bed? No. Yes, you do. Just, just come here in a minute. I can charge it off my laptop if he gets the cable. My laptop's within arm's distance. No, no, no. I could hand it to you, too. I mean, I'm not, like, tethered the way you are right now. I guess he could do that. Alright. Um, the last album you purchased. Oh, hang on a second. I'm still putting on Rated X. Okay. I can talk about the last record I purchased, though, because I just went to the record store today. So, and they actually had some vinyls there that um, I've been keeping an eye out for, which is kind of a trick because that doesn't happen very often. But there are like a few things. Would you go? Are you going to go look for that charger, my friend? Where the coats are, under them. I need the iPhone one. Thank you, my friend. Do you need the laptop or can you reach it? I can reach it. Yeah, I just can't. Okay. So this is Miles Davis. There's a constant power cord on it, so I can just plug it in directly. There's absolutely no trumpet on this song. So anyway, I think this is insanely good. But uh, back in the 90s, when I'd like make tapes for people and shit, I'd make like a hard rock tape and I'd sneak this into the middle. Like in the middle of like Deep Purple and Uriah Heep and shit like that. Like Armageddon and shit and other like German shit. I would stick this in there and be like, what the fuck is that? Oh my God, it's Miles Davis. Okay, so what did I get today? I got this one. This is dedicated to Greeno and to my record dealer friend in Columbia. His name is David. But I don't know if he wants his last name out there. So, but yeah, those two, uh, David more than anyone, but um, Greeno to a certain degree too, uh, won me over on this band. So I'm looking forward to hearing that. And I've actually never owned this one before. And actually, this one has a distinction of being on. Uh, um... See, I've heard good things about this record. But this one has a distinction. It's a new, it came out a new renaissance in the States, but this is a German press on US metal records. And US metal has a distinction of being maybe the worst record label ever. I don't think I've ever heard a release on US metal that was any good. So I'm actually kind of fascinated by this now because uh, I was a little wary of this one anyway because new renaissance releases kind of tend to suck. But if it was on New Renaissance in the U.S. and then got licensed by U.S. Metal, that's just like such like a perfect configuration of suck that, um, I don't know. I've heard good things about this record, like I said, so uh, we'll see, man. It might actually be great. I'd be happy to be wrong. Actually, I'm expecting that to be good. I'd be happy to be right, is what I should say. Anyway, what's the next question? All right, a great album with a bad cover and a bad album with a cool cover. Okay. Way it up with a bad cover is kind of easy, but this is my pick. This is my favorite. Okay. 
Look at this. Isn't that terrible? Looks like a piece of shit AOR record, right? Wait, 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 wait. It gets worse. It's fucking awful. Dude. Anyway, this is Cosmos Factory. This is their third record, Black Hole. Cosmos Factory from Japan are fantastic anyway. It's like great prog shit, but it has like that Japanese weirdness about it, and it's just fucking, it's so good. This record is awesome. And keep its cover in mind, because if you come across this cheap, which you might, because it looks like a terrible AOR record, you probably won't find it cheap, though. Uh, it's, yeah, this is great. Get anything by Cosmos Factory to come across, because they're awesome. Now, uh, a bad record with a good cover. All right, this was kind of my first choice, because this is a fantastic cover. I actually never even took it out of the, out of the plastic that's sealed in. But look at that. It's fucking Charlton Heston reads the five books of Moses. Or from the five books of Moses, I should say. With the Robert de Cormier Corral. That's why I never opened it up. Because Charlton Heston reading the Bible sounds pretty good. But if they were like fucking people singing, actually this might be great. But it's probably unlistenable. So, that's it. But look at how earnest he is, man. You know, you know why he is making that face? Because you can take away his Bible when you pry it from his cold, dead hands. That's why. Okay, but that's but that's not my pick. That was that was the runner up. I think my pick. I haven't shown this in a while, but this is gonna be my pick right here. Fucking the pig record. Yeah, longtime viewers might remember this one. Original first album by Pig. And this is one that has a distinction of having the nose that squeaks, which actually slipped on this, but so it's down here. Look at that. But this record is really kind of mediocre, like 60s, like Japanese pop, like if you like, this is like the Tigers or something like that. This is no better than any of that shit. It's kind of mediocre. You know, the Mops. I mean, except it's not even as good as the Mops. They had better songs. It's really not that great, but this cover is just fucking legendary. I mean, my God. Jesus. So, yeah, if you're going off the cover, this should be the greatest record of all time, but I'm afraid it's not. It's actually kind of lame. So, all right, what's next? The Blues album. Here's a blues one. That's a fucking dumb question. Because either you're the blues or you're not. What a fucking stupid thing to ask about. Maybe I'll pull out an Edgar Winter record like a dumbass. Alright, fuck that. I have a couple blues records, but I'm not into blues. I'm not gonna like pretend to be into blues just because of a dumb question. So what's next? An earworm song. It doesn't say an earworm. It does say an earworm yeah, song. An earworm. Alright, so so there are lots, but I figure if we're gonna go if we're gonna do this, then what we should do is we should be honest. I just go right for the real fucking earworms. So, um, my pick would probably be um, I Love Trash or people, in your, actually people in your neighborhood. Fucking yeah. In fact, you know something? I think Miles wants to hear it too because he just fucking shut up in time. Right. At just the right time. I bet I won't even yeah. get a fucking like ad put on it for this. I bet this fucking video gets monetized. It's going to be that dick Miles and not like Bob McGrath who's just the nicest guy on the planet. Good luck with that. Yeah. By the way, this record I found for a buck at a thrift store, and it's like pristine, which is miraculous, because these Sesame Street records aren't necessarily all that hard to find. But, you know, they gave them to little kids, so usually they're pretty much destroyed. All right. Oh, Five People in My Family is great, too. Man, there's so many good songs on this. I'm going to skip somebody come and play because it's annoying and just go to I Love Trash. And then we'll get to people in your neighborhood in a minute. All right. Okay, okay. This fucking good quality. Oscar, what are you doing anyway? What does it look like I'm doing, Bob? Well, it looks like you're, you know, making a mess. I guess I'm making a mess. Well, I'm going to 
You know what's funny is that Oscar's such a dink, but he gets all excited about singing his song. Beautiful, Oscar. Well, I would. Just look at it all. What a beautiful junky mess of rotten, rusty, mangy, musty, crummy, beautiful trash. There's a dude who just retired, by the way. Carol Spinney. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so this is the ear warm. All right. A historically important artist. Find your own fucking... I mean, the Beatles. What's next? An album you own because of your parents. Oh, I don't have any. My parents had terrible taste. Um, no, my, my parents are really into like listening to records. Although, I'll tell you something, I would have gone to see Harry Belafonte back in like 1983 with my dad, but uh, the stars didn't quite align right. Um, so it's not all bad, you know. But anyway, what else? I don't actually have any records. If you're going to show parents. it, I think you're going to show for this. People are going to be mad. What? Best dollar been found. Oh, yeah, what am I going to show for? It? This one? Yeah. So this is kind of cheating because it's actually. I didn't. <laughs> This was only 50 cents. But right here, man. That's it. I hope you can tell what that shit is. Like, I almost want to get this peeled, but I kind of don't. Because, like, it's kind of awesome that it is the way it is. I found this in a thrift store in L.A. for 50 cents. It's actually a little early for the kind of for the era of Beatles that I like. Like, um, it was not that early. It's like right on the edge is what it is. Like, we can work it out. Drive my car. Those are kind of lame songs. Day Trip is kind of overplayed. I, I don't know. I don't really need to ever listen. But you know. It, day Tripper, I mean, not Day Tripper, yesterday and today was before Revolver. This is late. Was before what? Revolver. It was before. It was Rubber yeah. Soul. Well, this Rubber came out right Soul. before Rubber Soul, I think. Came out right after Rubber Soul. Oh, wait Soul. a minute. How do you know this shit? It's Rubber Soul. It's something that Vinny taught me, actually. It's Rubber Soul, yesterday and today was like an intermediate, and then that led into Revolver. How about that? Happy? Happy? Well, this is like a singles comp anyway, though. I think uh, Rubber it Soul is. is a better album. It is. Anyway, uh, Rubber, Rubber Soul is actually the first one that I really like. Huh? Rubber Soul is their best album. I don't know. I like Revolver. I might even say Sgt. Peppers. But Rubber Soul is good, you know? Anyway, um... If you take the word off Rubber Soul, it's the perfect album. A face can be up. A face can be down. It's on here. That's why I'm like looking. I'm sort of cheating and singing the songs. Yeah, you know something? There's nothing on here I'm going, oh fuck, I never need to hear that again. Like with this one with yesterday, you know? So. That's Bob. By the way, here's a little bit of Sesame Street trivia. Did anyone notice that, uh, does anyone else know that Bob is the only one who actually used his real name? Like, this is the first Gordon. They had three different Gordons, but this is Matt Robinson. And I don't remember her name. Mr. Hooper was Bill Lee. But that's Bob McGrath right there, and he has like a fuckload of kids too. Like, I don't remember the exact number. I think it's something like ten thousand or something. No, I think it's like eight. I think it's like eight kids. Anyway, what's next? Favorite double album. That's a dumb question. Fucking, yeah, it, it's not a newbie question, dude. Fucking favorite double album. It's not an issue when you get beyond a certain point, you know. What am I gonna say, like? I don't even know. I don't even have a dumb answer for that one, frankly. I mean, I, I just... Double albums are just, like, part of the deal. So just keep going. If you collect records, you have them. It's not like, oh, this is great because it's a double. You, know? you already answered an album you learned about from the VC in the past year. So um, I've got more, though. And actually, there's another channel you should subscribe to. It's FX Paint. Like, Foxtrot, X-Ray, Papa. Um, yeah, dude's name is Tom, and he sent me some fucking jazz shit that's just fucking fantastic. And this is one of them, man. I would not have, I don't think, have heard of Hussein Ertuj and Muziki, but this is awesome. It's just like great free jazz shit. And, um, here's another one. 
just for grins, because he sent me this one too. Geechee Recollections by Marianne Brown. Another really cool free jazz one. Just how a person feels inside. So good. It was a really good record. He followed about one of my very favorite letters of the alphabet by Big Bird. A 10 inch record. And I put it in my book. It's what do you think I'm going to say about a 10 inch record? Like a you know what I'm going to do? Very special letter. Because and this is the thing that I'd be a smart ass about. I'm going to actually show one. Okay. On top, the, the next one's about the 7 inch records, though. Isn't it? The yeah. Here. Can you see like the thing? Beans. These are my 45s. It's not a lot, but these three boxes, all right? I'm not going to pull out one fucking thing and say, you know, here's a 7 inch record. But you know something? I will with the 10 inch. I'll play a lot. Because this one is really good. That's uh, kind of special. This Jerry Mulligan Quartet, which in addition to being the uh, first uh, Pacific Jazz record, see that PJLP one? But this is also the classic Jerry Mulligan Quartet with uh, Chet Baker. Yeah, it's uh, Chet Baker and Chico Hamilton, and I don't know who the other dude is, so I'm going to find out for you. Yeah, Von Whitlock. Or Bob Whitlock, actually. It's interesting. It also has Chet Baker as Chesney H. Baker. So, but anyway, uh, you know, people talk about that class, that Jerry Mulligan group with uh, the Pianolist Quartet with Chet Baker, but uh, you don't see that shit around very often, so I was still to find that. So there you go, there's a ten inch one. Alright, what's next? A seven inch record. What's after that? Favorite album to, to fall asleep to. Alright, here's people in your neighborhood. Tell me this isn't an earworm. This is like one of the in best songs ever written. In your neighborhood, say who are the people in your neighborhood? The people that you meet each day. Oh, hi there, little fella. Oh. Hey, listen, you know who you can I should have said that to people were. Oh, hi there, little fella. A bag to carry over your shoulder? Not going to be a laundry man. No, not a laundry man. How about Santa Claus? No, 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 not Santa Claus. What's wrong with Santa Claus? There's nothing wrong with Santa Claus. Don't you like Christmas? Oh, I love Christmas, but you could be the postman. A postman? Just goes to show, don't talk shit about the postman. Because he's going to bring your mail through rain or snow or sleet or anything. Including your vinyls. Alright, I'm sorry, what was the question? An album to fall asleep to. Oh yeah, you know something? Um, if I associate something with that question, though, I don't have anything on record right now. I used to have a four CD set of Fats Domino. And there's nothing I like more. I listen to Pat's Domino every night for months. And I'm not exaggerating, every night for months. No, there's no fire at all, but you know who you could be if I gave you this little shiny red hat? Yeah, Santa Claus. No, not Santa Claus. No, 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 not Red Riding Hood. You could be a Don't you like Christmas? There's a war. <laughs> and Bob is waiting. <laughs> That's right. All right, anyway, um, yeah, Fats Domino, man. I kind of wouldn't mind some right now, but I love Fats Domino, and I could probably give you more reasons not to like Fats Domino than to like him, because he basically wrote one song. I just, like, recut it over and over, but he just, he delivered the shit with so much style, man. I could listen to Fats Domino all day. All right, what's next? Your favorite VC experience and or advice okay, for people contemplating up. making videos. The song kind of sucks. So, um, all right. So the best thing about it is the friends you make easily. And my favorite experience, it's hard to pick a single one. I mean, meeting people in person definitely kind of feels like a crowning achievement in a way. I mean, achievement isn't the right word, but like... You know, you get to know people a little bit through the comment sections and that, and then maybe like exchange some private messages and that. When you actually meet someone that you wouldn't have otherwise known, that just feels like this 
just amazing thing. It's just really kind of nuts. We haven't putting too much into it, but I felt that way when I met Greeno, and then with Grown Men Record Night more recently with Nate Bouchard, Ron Haggerty. So, um, yeah, you know, and I've never met Scott Waters in person, but I mean, I really consider him like a good friend. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, there have been a couple other funny things here and there, but, you know, that's probably the biggest thing. That's what's most important, anyway, because this is about. And you know something else that amazes me, too? You look at any other channel, and their fucking comment sections are cesspools, you know? It's like, no wonder they don't reply to comments with the shit that people say, just the sniping and bickering. But, like, you can go to just about any person who's, like, talking about records, and it's, like, thoughtful comments by generally cool people, you know? And, um... Yeah, I mean, you might find a couple dicks, but that's like the um, exception. That's not the rule at all. As far as advice, I don't know. I thought of something really snappy a couple weeks ago. Uh, Vinyl Richie already said, be yourself. Um, I've heard a little bit of a debate as far as whether you should show shit that's common or shit that's unusual. Um, I don't think it matters. If you show, but one thing, okay, but prepare to be frustrated if you show obscure shit. Because people who show common shit will get a lot more views. And it's like, you'll be fucking sitting there saying, here's this cool-ass Marion Brown record that no one's talking about. How come everyone's watching some of this, that other moron talk about the same Beatles records over and over and over again? Just the way it is. I don't know why it is. I felt that way about the Beatles and Kiss and other things like that, you know? Whatever. That's just how it is. And it comes with the turf. And, you know... You, you can't really be resentful about it because that shit is popular, so it's the way it goes, you know? Yes, that's my advice. I don't even know if that is advice. Whatever, that's what I've got to say on the topic. How are we doing for time? 37 minutes. Yeah, I knew this was going to be a long eat. Oh, this is great. It's even more than three or four. Four. You know what I've got five of? Well, I'll tell you. I've got five people in my family, and there's not one of them I swap. There is a sister, Hi. and two brothers, that's us. and a mother, Hello, and a pop. That's me. Oh, what a great rhyme. It's such a pretty number. I'm awfully glad that I find people in my family. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. God, whoever wrote this is a genius. Oh, I've got five people in my family, and there's not one of them I'd ever swap. Where is that? If I may point out for a good 30 seconds, it was perfectly synced up to the action sequence. Yeah. Alright, is that it? Is that the last question? Yeah, it was. I, think I just let it run because if you've watched this long, you should get to enjoy this song because fucking. It's so good. One, two, three, four, five. Goddamn. All right. I forgot a rubber ducky by that's on this record too. That's an earworm. But I think that song is better. All right. Um. Thanks for watching. <laughs> and yeah, this was more fun than I expected it to be. So, let's cut it. Thanks. <laughs>